Stefano, who scored in every final. The first five European Cups he won with Real Madrid. And the teams changed, the teams changed, and he, was, he went through from be the, the beginning of it to the end of it. And uh, his period at Real Madrid probably gave Real Madrid the, the mystique that they have now. It all started with Alfredo. I would say that he represents the beginning of everything. The old Madrid team was nothing more than an average side, but when he arrived, we started to win everything. That's how we became famous all over the world. Real Madrid, a winning team. He had an effect both on and off the pitch. On the pitch, because he was everywhere. There wasn't a particular area where he liked to play. Off the pitch, he showed, like no one else, how much he respected and loved the image of Real Madrid. And he transmitted that sense of respect to all his teammates. I think Spain and the city of Madrid became famous because of Real, especially in Europe. You would go abroad and the kids would know all about the club. They'd go crazy when you offered them a team badge. Because even the kids knew that Real Madrid were the greatest team around. By now it was the classic Real Madrid forward line of Puskas, Hento and Real, with Santa Maria and Pachin further behind them. But as Real Madrid became the greatest team on earth, one man stood out as their symbol, Alfredo Di Stefano. Back when I was a boy, I'd watch all the finals that Real Madrid won, and he was the heartbeat of that side. He'd be in defence, attack, midfield. He was everywhere. We were fascinated by him, especially in a time when he didn't see much international football. So the day after a big final, we'd all be playing football in the playground at school, pretending to be Real Madrid players. Back in Africa, we'd always dreamed about playing Real Madrid. We'd heard of them, winners of the European Cup, and of course, De Stefano, my hero. When the time came for Real to actually lose a game in Europe, fate couldn't have been crueler. Their first defeat came against Barcelona in 1961. But Di Stefano was back in the final in 1962, playing against Eusebio's Benfica. One of the things I remember most from that final was that I asked Di Stefano if I could have his shirt. I said, Sir, could I please have your shirt? As back in Africa, my father and brothers always said what a great player you were. So I'd like to have your shirt. Eusebio, the young African sensation, scored twice as Benfica won 5-3. But for him, the star of the show played for Real Madrid. And at the end of the game, he gave me a shirt. So even when we'd won the game and we'd won the European Cup, the most important thing for me was the shirt. Real Madrid had already won five European Cups and I think that Europe didn't want Real to win again. They wanted a new king. Two years later, Sandro Mazzola was in the Inter Milan side that took on Madrid in the final. So when I found myself up against Real Madrid in that final, I remember being in the tunnel before the game and it was badly lit. But I saw that figure dressed all in white and I thought he was two metres tall. I saw him like a god of football, something incredible. So much so that before the game I stopped and stared at him until my teammate Luis Suarez, who played in several finals, said to me, Oi, kid, we're going to play a football match. Are you just going to stare at Alfredo? So that woke me up. Mazzola was soon on his game though, scoring twice as Inter beat Madrid 3-1 in Vienna. I remember when I scored in the 42nd minute. In my head the game was over. I'd scored against Real Madrid. It was a dream come true. Something that I could only have imagined just two or three years before. After more than ten years at Real Madrid and at the age of 38, Di Stefano spent a further two years with Espanyol de Barcelona. 
He then went into management, spending four years at Valencia, but it was always going to be difficult to match the success he'd enjoyed in his playing days. Being a coach just isn't the same as being a player. It's more like the hen with her chicks. The hen has to look after her chicks, and that's what the manager has to do. He has to keep them happy, cheerful, and help them cultivate the team spirit. Di Stefano did have some success as a coach, winning titles with Boca Juniors, River Plate and Valencia. But in the end, it just wasn't the same as being a player. As a player, I could be creative. As a manager, I couldn't. The abiding memory of Alfredo Di Stefano will always be as a phenomenal player. So much so that Real Madrid would never have been the club they are today without his influence. He won five European Cups and eight Spanish titles in his time there. So Di Stefano's contribution is the biggest reason why FIFA named Real Madrid the team of the 20th century. FIFA nominated as the team of the century. Apart from winning La Liga and the Spanish Cup, Real Madrid won five consecutive European Cups. And until today, we've won a total of nine. From the days when it was just a small side, the team went on to become a great club. And that's why FIFA said it's the team of the century. It's no exaggeration to say that it was Di Stefano's era that set the standards for the Madridistas. That's the way it has to be. To continue the great legacy of this club, you need success. And without these triumphs, it's like a light that goes out. Known around the club as Don Alfredo, he's the man that played for Argentina, Colombia and Spain. Nowadays, Real Madrid are one of the world's biggest clubs. But whenever there's a big footballing event in the Spanish capital, guess who's there at the centre? I'm the president of the Veterans Association for the older players. And in addition to that, I was nominated honorary president of the club. I was a little embarrassed about that because I thought I didn't deserve it, but you should never refuse an award. And therefore, I'm now pleased that they gave it to me. He still represents the image of this club. He was nominated honorary president and of course, there were no doubts about that decision. The truth is, he is still the symbol of Real Madrid. In fact, wherever Alfredo goes, there are lots of people who show a big interest in him. Young fans, journalists, everyone. He still has great appeal, despite his age and despite the fact that he stopped playing a long time ago. That Di Stefano is Madrid's greatest ever player is beyond question for many, but one person isn't quite convinced. I don't consider myself the most important player of Real Madrid's history. I've always played for the team, but I've been lucky to play as a centre-forward, and the centre-forward is the man who scores the goals. And people always admire the player who scores the goals, but this player has achieved that thanks to the efforts of the defence. That's how things happen. You have to be a good person to succeed. Di Stefano may be modest about his contribution, but many others, especially his teammates, are ready to pay him the ultimate tribute. We absolutely adore Alfredo. For us, he's like a god. We spend as much time as possible with him as we admire him from all points of view. We're not talking just about the player now, but also about the man. He's been special to us. We've spent a lot of years together. In fact, we almost spent more time with one another than with our wives and our families. To us, he's been the greatest thing that could have happened. There are so many memories. He was always a winner and he had so much success year after year. And he deserved it all. Nothing was given to him. He achieved it all through dedication and fighting for the colours of his team. Alfredo Di Stefano, the greatest player that ever lived? Quite possibly. Whichever way, the man himself is pretty satisfied. Well, 
I can't complain really. Despite my old age, I'm still here, alive and kicking and talking to you. I should thank the fans for that and obviously someone above us all. He's the one I should thank.